Hello, everybody, and welcome to Leading Indicator, a show by public.com focused on gaining insight from the world's best macro minds. I'm your host, Anne Berry, and we're here with you today to discuss the Fed's decision to pause on rate hikes and what it may mean for the crypto market. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more in-depth interviews that will help keep your portfolio on track. Today, we have here with us Zach Pandel, Managing Director of Research at Grayscale, to discuss the Fed's recent interest rate decision, some of the commentary that came with it, and how the macro environment is impacting crypto markets. Zach, thank you so much for joining. Excited to hear your thoughts today. Pleasure to be here. So, Zach, before we get into the Federal Reserve's decision, let's zoom out a little bit. Just take us through some of the big macro indicators that you and your team at Grayscale have been following coming into the last quarter of this year. What are some of the key metrics that you've been watching closely? Well, thanks, uh, Anne. You know, so my background is as a macroeconomist focused on uh, financial markets. and. You know, there was a time when that was not that important thing to have in, in crypto. Uh, crypto behaved as really its own ecosystem with no correlation to what was happening in the broader financial system or, or the broader economy. But that's no longer true. Uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum are quite sensitive to what's happening in the economy and the broader financial system, and especially what the Federal Reserve is choosing to do with, with interest rates. So over the last uh, few years, what you've seen is the Federal Reserve go through a big swing in policy from very easy uh, interest rates, very low interest rates, to uh, rapid interest rate increases. And this has had a big effect on uh, digital asset valuations. Uh, first, lowering interest rates weakened the value of the dollar and lifted the price of Bitcoin. And then more recently, interest rate increases raised the value of the dollar and weighed on, on Bitcoin's price. So what we've been looking for is really an end to that process, end of the tightening process by the Federal Reserve. You know, as rate increases are ongoing, it will be a continued headwind for Bitcoin, Ethereum, other cryptocurrencies. When that process comes to an end, we can possibly start to sow the seeds of an eventual recovery. And, and so just, Zach, to drill into some of that a little bit more, his, over the last couple of years, and particularly through uh COVID, there's a lot of discussion around crypto as an inflation hedge right and and talk to us a little and com comparisons with gold too in terms of um managing risk within portfolios so two related but also independent variables just again as we zoom out how has crypto as an inflation hedge and how is crypto as um a risk mitigating in some eyes asset evolved so I think Bitcoin has behaved exactly as I would expect for an inflation hedge uh, asset. And where I'd like to sort of start this conversation is to ask investors, you know, the next time that you think the Federal Reserve might do something with monetary policy that generates uh, too much inflation, you know, what is going to be the right asset to protect your portfolio? That's, that's the meaning of an inflation uh, hedge. And that's exactly what we saw after COVID when the Federal Reserve cut interest rates down to uh, low levels and started expanding the money supply, as inflation picked up, Bitcoin's price uh, took off. So as we were starting to develop these inflation risks, that asset uh, increased in value. That's what you want to see as an inflation hedge. Now, the reverse is also true. Now, when the central bank decides inflation is too high and that it needs to get serious about bringing inflation down, uh, inflation hedges are not going to work anymore. Th those things should fall in value when the, the central bank is busy squeezing inflation out of the economy. And that's exactly how Bitcoin has behaved. So uh, I know this is a, there's a debate around this, but I think Bitcoin has, has definitely performed as it should as an inflation hedge. And I think it should be thought of as a kind of digital gold and something that is taking market share away uh, from gold as an inflation hedge uh, over time. Let's uh, dig Zach then into the recent meeting, right? We saw the Fed announce after its September FOMC meeting that it will pause rate hikes. That was expected, but there was some unexpected news in there too, Zach. You know, depending on who you ask, at least consensus view was that there would possibly not be another hike this year. It looks coming out of this meeting as though that's become more probable. And the outlook for rate cuts in 2024, in terms of the number of them, also seems to have gone a little bit sideways versus the market. It now looks we are looks like we are going to have rates higher for longer than the market had anticipated. When you look at those 
uh, sort of elements coming at it from the crypto lens, what do those new pieces of information from the Fed yesterday mean for the crypto market? Yeah, that's exactly right. I, I think I saw two pieces of news uh, in the recent uh, meeting. One is, as you say, they're maybe not quite done uh, with interest rate increases. Uh, we think we're getting pretty close, but a majority of Fed officials thought that at least one more rate increase this year would be appropriate. That in and of itself is a headwind uh, for crypto. Higher rates, central bank tough on inflation is going to be a headwind for all assets, but particularly things that are intended to be an inflation hedge, for example, like, uh, like Bitcoin. On the other hand, the other major uh, message from the Fed yesterday was that it has embraced this idea of a soft landing for the economy. This is the thesis that we can bring inflation down without having a recession. So what the Federal Reserve showed was higher expectations for growth in the economy, low unemployment, but still a path for inflation getting down to 2% and, and remaining there. So that's sort of the thought, soft landing uh, idea. Now, well, Zach, let's just dig into that a bit because actually the Fed Chair Powell was asked whether a soft landing was his baseline expectation, and he actually said it wasn't. Um, just help us just understand your point relative to his commentary and what you think his baseline actually is. Well, there are some, of course, semantic differences here, of but course. the Federal Reserve yep. uh, staff is not forecasting a recession, and the Federal yep. Reserve officials, in forecasts that they presented with the meeting, removed an increase in the unemployment rate that they right. previously expected. So no need for a meaningful increase in the unemployment rate, still uh, getting inflation uh, back down to 2%. That is basically the definition of a, of a soft landing. And, and talk to us a little bit about, from your seat, what your outlook is for recessionary outlook or not, unemployment, inflation, GDP. I mean, we're going into a really important part of the year. We've got seasonality from holiday season. We've also now got the election cycle upon us, which, which often has an impact on economic expectations. What's your outlook right now, Zach? So we, we don't know, of course, whether there will be a soft landing or a recession, and, and neither does, uh, does the Fed. What yeah. we can say is that we have had a lot of progress in bringing inflation down without seeing a lot of damage to the labor market. So the job market continues to be pretty healthy, low unemployment, job growth, decent wage gains. So the prospect of a soft landing is, is there. The, the flip side of that, of course, is that these are rare. Most of the time when the Federal Reserve is raising interest rates to, to bring inflation down, we do see uh, recessions. So it's a tough call. I think it's a close call whether the economy skirts recession and has a soft landing or has a, a mild recession. Um, and you know, at this point, we, we don't know. I would say at this point, uh, it looks promising. And that's the message that we got from the Fed. Now, the last time we saw a soft landing was in the mid 1990s. Uh, the Federal right. Reserve raised interest rates uh, in 1994, uh, and we got inflation down without a recession. That period in the late 90s, of course, proved to be very good for risky assets, for technology stocks. And so I think a soft landing today would be a positive outcome for crypto. It would help valuations begin to recover if we can get inflation down without a, a recession. So we'll, we'll see. Zach, you just said that uh, it looks positive, but the markets have reacted poorly to the Fed's announcement. The S&P and NASDAQ both down about 2% since the rate decision was released. Why is that? Well, there are, of course, quite a lot of moving parts, uh, as always, in, uh, in markets. And you've seen uh, asset markets uh, deteriorate really since the beginning of August. Why is that uh, the case? Um, I think our, our belief would be that that largely has to do with an excess of bond supply hitting the market. So the US government mm -hmm. is running very large uh, deficits. And that means sending a lot of bonds uh, out into public markets that need to be uh, purchased. That excess supply of bonds, we think, is putting upward pressure on interest rates and downward pressure on, on the equity markets. And, and so I wouldn't see uh, recent performance um, in the last day uh, as related to the Fed uh, so much, but a continuation of this uh, too much bond supply, too much borrowing uh, problem. Interesting. And, and so, Zach, talk about how that feeds into the crypto market. You've been really articulate and clear on what excess bond supply or increased bond supply is doing to the public equity market. What's it doing to the crypto market? So, again, digital assets are 
uh, a part of the financial system uh, now. They're not an independent uh, ecosystem. And so they're correlated to things like the value of the dollar or the NASDAQ, uh, the level of the, the NASDAQ. So as interest rates are going up, they're putting pushing down uh, equity markets and they'll have a tendency to push down uh, digital asset valuations as well, the price of Bitcoin and, and the price of Ethereum. So you know, the reason that we are you know, not in a, uh, not at the highs uh, for, for Bitcoin or for Ethereum is because we still are dealing with these things, still are dealing with a late cycle economy that has inflation, Federal Reserve uh, rate increases, uh, all of these things are, are weighing on asset markets, including uh, crypto. As those things come to an end, we think relatively soon in terms of the Fed's uh, tightening process, mm. valuations can start to recover uh, again. So, Zach, if, if the Fed is coming to the end of its, uh, let's call it, action-intensive phase, are you starting to shift your focus to pay more attention to what's going on on the fiscal side, on the federal spending side, and the debt issuance? Like, I mean, at what point is what the Fed doing just a little less interesting to you, and is fiscal policy a lot more interesting to you? Well, I think that's a great question, and I, I think that that is right, that the Fed is becoming a little less interesting. Uh, they maybe have one more hike later this year, they, they maybe don't, but that really doesn't matter in the grand uh, scheme of things. Mm. They've raised interest rates from zero to something around uh, five and a half uh, percent. You know, that has a big impact on all asset uh, prices, had a big impact on, on Bitcoin. Uh, but one more hike is not going to make a terrible amount of difference one way or the other. What we want to focus on now is the deficit, the bond supply hitting the market, yeah. whether the economy heads into recession, and increasingly the election uh, cycle as well. You know, that'll matter both for the health of the overall economy, how much spending, taxation do we have, but also specifically for crypto, uh, because there are a lot of kind of legislative questions around, uh, around our markets. Interesting. Um, so I would say that we are pivoting away from the Fed and towards some of these uh, new topics. What are some of the other uh, indicators, Zach, that you and your teams spend time, some time looking at, just to brainstorm these a little? Labor market you've referred to, of course, that feeds into inflation, of course, fiscal policy. There are anecdotes around the health of the consumer that are out there. Uh, it's delinquency rates on credit cards, on consumer loans, on auto loans. On the flip side, we're seeing some of the sectors that did some of the biggest layoffs, tech, looking like they're ramping up hiring again, although in different departments relative to where they were hiring before, Salesforce being a case in point, Amazon being a case in point. Are those some of the things that you're watching? Are these relevant data points for you? I, I would maybe steer in a slightly different uh, direction. You know, this is not the same business cycle that we had in 2008, nine, uh, you know, the mortgage and housing driven uh, recession. Uh, yeah. Consumers today are in pretty good health. You know, the job market is good. There's some borrowing, but not in excess. I don't think that we're going to have a consumer-centric downturn in the economy if we if we have one. Mm -hmm. The concern should be more on the investment uh, side. You know, the okay. Fed has raised interest rates. Uh, mortgage rates have gone up. The cost of borrowing for firms has gone up. Uh, and stresses on the banking system have also tightened credit, particularly for things like commercial real estate. So yeah. if we're going to have problems in the economy, I would encourage looking at the investment side rather than the, the consumer side. Housing investment, business spending on capital equipment, those are the cyclical parts of the economy, the things that typically uh, put the economy into recession. That's where we would be most focused from a macro standpoint. Of course, there's many things in crypto that aren't related to the macro economy that the team is also very focused on. But from a macro standpoint, I'd say the yeah. investment cycle is the thing to watch. Let, and let's just dig into that a little bit, Zach, because you raise a great point, which is specifically on commercial real estate. We've seen some high profile defaults on hotels, for example, on office buildings hit the headlines. Talk to us about what you and your team are seeing when you dig through the attention grabbing headlines and look at the hard data on leverage levels and commercial real estate and the possibility for more defaults. So th this market is under meaningful pressure from a, both a cyclical and a structural uh, standpoint. Mm. The cyclical is that the Fed has raised interest rates and banks that do a lot of that lending are under some uh, pressure. But of course, there's something else going on, which is which is COVID and the effects that it's had on work habits and on, on spending habits, on travel uh, habits. So people are just not spending time in big cities, in office buildings, doing the same things that they were prior right. to the pandemic. And so you have pressure on office markets that reflects both of those uh, factors. 
there, there are some things that are positive, though. I, I would say that it's not a uniform picture. For example, domestic manufacturing is coming back to a significant degree, a reshoring of manufacturing activity that may have taken place in Asia, for example. We are seeing some of that come back uh, uh, here to the domestic economy. So it's not a, entirely uniform, but the office market in particular under significant cyclical and, and structural uh, pressure. There's also a timing issue there, Zach, because when you talk about friend shoring or near shoring or repatriating supply chain, that takes a heck of a long time. It takes yeah. a really long time, whereas it feels as though the impact of interest rates is now happening real time or soon to be real time on the commercial real estate sector. Um, do you have a sense for whether commercial real estate is on the cusp of a, a big catalyzing pressure point, or do you think there is some time, at, particularly if the Fed's articulate about the runway for the banks, the lenders, and the real estate companies themselves to figure out a plan? Well, let me let me say two things about this. Uh, first, uh, markets are well aware of this, uh, so you know it's yeah. uh, markets have discounted uh, this issue to a significant degree, and you know really the next question is do these valuations for properties for office properties begin to come down? But the financial markets are aware that there is a uh, an issue uh, here, and so I, I don't think it will come to a huge surprise. The other thing to stress, though, is that this is part of the process of slowing the economy down. The Federal Reserve is not raising rates for its own sake. They're raising rates because inflation is way too high. And to get inflation down, you have to slow down uh, the economy. So raising rates affects the interest rate sensitive parts of the economy, like the housing market, the commercial real estate market, to some extent, uh, business investment uh, as well. So the commercial real estate weakness, yes, it is concerning for that specific sector, but it's also just part of the process of cooling off the economy to make sure that we can all benefit from relatively low inflation. And in that sense, is a fairly typical part of the monetary policy tightening cycle. Last question for you, Zach. I know that you and your team really focus on economic research, but I would be remiss if I didn't ask you about the regulatory environment. How much are you looking at some of the uh, positions that the SEC has taken, some of the other regulatory uh, bodies that have been looking closely at crypto? What's your sense for whether there is sentiment towards more regulation of crypto or different regulation of the crypto space? Well, what I would say is that crypto is a global uh, asset market. Uh, so the U.S. is a very important market, but it's a, a global industry and there are regulators in all different uh, uh, countries progressing at uh, different uh, speeds. I'm pretty encouraged by what I'm seeing on a kind of holistic uh, basis, including in the U.S., but also outside the U.S., in terms of bringing clear regulatory guidelines uh, to this really important uh, uh, industry. And I'd say in the U.S. in particular, we're encouraged to see bipartisan uh, efforts around uh, legislation uh, around things like uh, stable coins. Uh, so, you know, the regulatory environment is always uh, changing for this industry, but I think moving forward, maturing and alongside the rest of the industry, both in the U.S. Uh, and internationally. Something I'm sure will continue to evolve, Zach, and, and perhaps we'll have you back to talk about uh, some of the trends that are going to be uh, evolving there. Zach Pandel, Managing Director of Research at Grayscale, thank you so much for joining us. And folks, that's it for this episode of Leading Indicators. Come back with more from us soon.